Hello everyone and welcome back to the D Hard House. My name is Alicia and this is my video podcast about all the crafty things that I like to do. So if you're a new viewer, welcome to the channel. And if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back and for subscribing. It really means a lot. So I am, uh, like I said, my name's Alicia and I'm coming to you from our home in Renton, Washington. And our includes myself, my husband, and our dog, our black Labrador, Marjorie. So uh, I am in my craft room slash home office area <laughs> during the times of remote learning. I'm a college professor. Okay. So, uh, today is Saturday, November 7th, and it has been a very eventful week in the United States as we find out the results of the various elections, not just for president and vice president, but also um, Congress, Senate, state positions like governor, lieutenant governor, etc. Uh, and I live in the state of Washington, and in the state of Washington, we uh, it's a huge mail-in ballot system. Um, as a new resident of Washington, I'm still learning about it myself. Um, but uh, yes, I mailed in my ballot, so I did not stand in line on election day. Uh, and my husband uh, took his to the ballot box and dropped it off on election day. <laughs> uh, I got mine in the mail beforehand. Um, ours did not arrive at the same time, so I got mine first, I mailed it in, his came later, so he dropped it off. Uh, but neither of us had to stand in line, um, and seeing as it's a very rainy, cloudy day today, thank goodness I didn't have to stand in line, especially with, you know, trying to physical distance to slow the spread of COVID-19. Um, yeah, I can just imagine the size of some of the lines across the nation in order to have our voices heard. So thank you to everyone who voted um, and participated in government. It's a really important civic duty and I think it's important to acknowledge that um, while it seems like a small thing to do, um, people we elect make decisions. Uh, that's what we elect them to do. So it's really important to make sure that our voice is heard, not just in, you know, who gets elected, but to continue having our voices heard, being active. So thank you to everyone who participated. Um, I think that's really great. So, yeah, that's all I'm going to say about that as I still wait to hear results of the big election. Um, we had some close races here in the state, um, which I still need to look up and find out. Um, our Secretary of State was a really close race. I think it got determined um, that our previous Secretary of State was reelected, but I don't know. I need to look up. <laughs> I need to look up those results. <laughs> um, anyway. So, I was originally going to spend this time uh, recording myself trying out my weaving loom for the first time, and uh, <laughs> it turns out I did not glue all of the pieces that needed gluing, I only glued half of them. There are two pieces that need gluing, I only glued one of them. Uh, it's an old loom. Uh, that I purchased secondhand, and it I didn't even intend to purchase the loom. It came as a throw-in with my spinning wheel, but I talk more about that. Um, I've already recorded the first segment, uh, and so I'll be putting together another craft along series where I try out my uh, rigid heddle loom for the first time. Um, it should be. Uh, fun, entertaining, and hopefully a little bit comical watching me um, try to figure things out without necessarily all of the parts that one would need. 
Uh, but uh, if, if I didn't call this channel the D-Hard House uh, channel, it would be called the Cheap Crafter channel because I craft on a budget and uh, I know a lot of folks out there also craft on a budget. So sometimes we just need to get creative in how we get creative and use tools that are unconventional. <laughs> so uh, that'll be a part of the video. So while I am waiting for the Gorilla Glue to dry, I will record a regular episode. So last week I was able to find the time to sit down and look, here I am again one week later, like what is happening? Have I struck work-life balance? <gasps> oh, that would be so great. <laughs> uh, so first of all, I am wearing a hand knit. I need to get in the habit of talking about what I'm wearing uh, at the beginning of the episode. So this is a finished object. I don't know if I shared with you folks this finished object after blocking. I believe I shared it with you before I blocked it, but um, excuse me, as a garment with an eyelet pattern in it, uh, blocking made a huge difference if you can imagine so this is my what did I call it I will say I'm not as organized this time I did not look up all my project names on Ravelry beforehand uh, but either way I should say all of the uh, projects that's the word. all the projects i'm going to talk about today can be found on my ravelry project page my ravelry name is aliddy knits too you can feel free to friend me follow me whatever the correct word is or just peruse through my projects uh, so this project is my coopworth campsite I think that's what I called it. <laughs> uh, I hand spun the yarn out of Coopworth, uh, which is a breed of sheep, Coopworth uh, wool. And so I, I washed it because I bought it dirty wool. I washed it, I combed it, I spun it, and I knit it. Uh, and I still have more left over. <laughs> Uh, which is funny but yeah so I will say Coopworth is not as soft as Merino um, or even uh, I'm gonna show you guys some Shetland here later uh, it's definitely a it's a more coarse fiber is coarse the correct word like the opposite of soft would fine be soft and coarse would be not as soft anyway i don't feel like i need to take this thing off like it's irritating it's just i can feel uh, i have a short sleeve shirt on underneath so i can feel the the sweater on my my forearms here but it's not irritating does that make sense okay <laughs> So the so the yarn is hand spun. Um, I was shooting for uh, a fingering weight yarn initially. I think I got more of a, a DK or sport weight um, thickness of yarn. Uh, so this is the campside cardi cardigan. Does she call it campside cardi or campside cardigan? Uh, it's a pattern by Alicia Plummer. And uh, it's a paid-for pattern available on Ravelry. She may have a bit, may have it available on other platforms. Uh, if so, I am not aware of it. I have not done the research. Uh, let me be open and upfront about that. I have not done the research. Okay. So let me stand up and show you the sweater. So I am wearing a clip-on microphone and I have the cord running underneath my t-shirt. So this is my microphone cord, by the way. <laughs> Not something else. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, it is long sleeve and I did need to knit the sleeves a bit long because I wanted this to be kind of like a jacket and be just uh, big. <laughs> so yeah, it is an open front style cardigan so it doesn't like really 
close. There are no buttons on here. Uh, I just wanted it to be open. Uh, and I did want it to be long and I did achieve that. So it is, uh, let's see, my butt. So it is under, under my bottom, <laughs> past my bottom. It does cover my butt, which was what I wanted. So it's great. Um, and yes, when I blocked it, it did stretch that out a bit more. But yes, it's got this beautiful eyelet pattern that transitions from less frequent eyelets to more frequent and then really frequent <laughs> uh, with ribbing around the edges. I'm trying to play with the lighting here. Uh, but yeah, so there was a bit of striping in the yarn and I was not going for striping in any way. Um, but, you know, that's just a part of the variation in the wool and I guess how I spun it up, the order that I chose. Um, but I still think it's pretty good. Oh, I just love this thing. I love it so much. But yeah, so it's finished, it's blocked, all the ends are woven in, uh, I have been wearing it. Uh, it does still smell very cheapy sheepy. Um, anyway, uh, I had to adjust my microphone. Uh, yeah, so I'm hoping it, um, I don't know, I, I don't know if other people can smell that. <laughs> who are around me um yeah i just wonder what people will think when i go back to work and they're like someone smells like they just got off the farm <laughs> uh which could be a good thing or a bad thing depending on what class you're teaching and who your students are anyway i love it and i'm really super satisfied and loving the whole process of fiber preparation and spinning and then and i already love knitting so i love seeing what it transforms into so that's what i'm wearing uh so i did find this in one of my many boxes while unpacking so this is one of my previous finished objects that i found that i said i would definitely share with you all uh, I did not find much else, but I did find um, the Deer Camp socks that I wanted to share with you folks. So, the Deer Camp socks. Yay! Here they are. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, let me just tell you a little bit about the yarn and the pattern. So the yarn is some commercial yarn. This is Premier Yarns Serenity Sock in whatever their green colorway is. Uh, it's a beautiful olive green, uh, but I think maybe they just call it green. I can't remember. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, so I have knit these for my father and they do incorporate um, some ribbing detail on the front of the sock because uh, like I said I got some feedback from my husband on how his socks are wearing after a you know a year or two of use are they still as good as the first time you put them on um, are there any ways that I could improve them, etc. And he mentioned that the socks with ribbing uh, stay up on his leg better, especially even throughout the day. Even if it's a new pair of socks uh, without the ribbing, just, just ribbing at the cuff, um, they fall down towards the end of the day. So. So that, that's what I'm trying to do here is incorporate more ribbing throughout so that it can stay up and snug longer. 
Uh, so this is knit uh, cuff down because that's my preferred method. Excuse me. I used a heel flap and gusset, so that's how the pattern will be written it's with a heel flap and gusset. But because there's no patterning on the back of the sock, you could easily swap this out for a different heel if that's what you prefer, um, like a short row heel or an OMG heel or a heel I've never heard of before or just haven't in a really long time. <laughs> Your own heel pattern. Um, if, if that's what you prefer, but it'll be written with the heel flap and gusset and uh, just a standard toe, standard toe decreases. So let me show you the front of the sock because that's where all the patterning is. Okay, so here it is off of the blocker. Let's see if I can do this. There we go. Just to showcase it a little bit better. I'll try to hide my face so it doesn't focus on my face. Um, but yeah, so there's this little, there's some mock cabling. Um, there's some knit and purl stitches, obviously with the ribbing. Uh, and I have this pattern running all the way up to the top of the sock. So uh, the back has know some regular ribbing but on the front it just continues that same ribbing pattern and it just goes all the way down the foot <laughs> uh, but yeah I think it looks really um, fancy <sighs> yep so uh, I had finished these socks a while ago <laughs> quite a while ago and uh, you know I don't think I shared the finished product with you folks I think they got packed and then I just didn't have time to record an episode because I was moving um, so I'm showing them to you now and I gave out a call last episode for test knitters so thank you to all of the all of you who reached out to me i really appreciate it um so this is going to be offered in a few sizes um and they're not going to be quote standard sizes because of the way i set up the patterning and uh and you know i don't want to give away all the details but um there will be different sizes so uh, i'll be in touch with you guys about the details and you can choose whatever size um, you prefer to knit. Um, but I did cast on another one myself, um, partially because my notes that I was taking when I was first drafting the pattern are not complete. And I did notice some things in this first sock that I also wanted to improve upon. So... So I am typing up the pattern and also making some slight improvements to it before I send it out to my test knitters. So uh, this is some um, Nipix Hawthorne and I don't, I don't remember the name of the colorway, but it's a variegated skein with, um, pastel colors, pink, purple, yellow, green. Um, I'm sorry, I'm using, it's a, it's a cloudy, rainy day today, and yet it looks like bright sunshine in here. <laughs> but yeah, I'm trying to work with the lighting. That's pretty good there. Yeah, uh, it looks really nice with the olive green, which, is funny but yeah so it's got the same you can hopefully see ribbing pattern running down the front of the sock I've got the heel flap and gusset finished and now I'm working down the foot so I did cast this on just because I find it uh, easier to understand 
what it is I'm trying to do if I work it out along with my writing. Um, it's the same way I do math. <laughs> ah, okay. Uh, so yeah, I just have the first sock. And so yeah, I've done all of this since I saw you folks last time. Uh, Mike and I finished watching uh, The Clone Wars, the TV show. And wow, that was, that was a good ending on that show. So Mike and I had started back in May because May the 4th was happening and we had decided to watch all of the Star Wars. If everything Star Wars, we're just going to watch everything. And we did get through the movies and then we circled back to the TV shows. So now we've finished Clone Wars. So we just started Star Wars Rebels. And so we're watching that now. So I've been doing a lot of this knitting while watching Star Wars TV shows. And I'm thoroughly enjoying it. While I'm on the sock train, I did finally finish my pair of shorty socks. Uh, last episode, I showed these to you guys. All I had to do was kitchener stitch the toe on my second sock. There was no knitting, just sewing up the toe. <laughs> so I did it. <laughs> I did it and I, and I finished them. So these are knit out of Manny Petty. It's a Lion Brand yarn and the colorway is Yoga. Uh, so they are knit from the same 50 gram ball uh, and the stripe sequence went this way. <laughs> so I knit this sock first and then wherever it left off on the ball, that's where I picked up this second sock. So I think you can tell they come from the same ball. They're just not matchy matchy, but I think that's fun. And these are very much like a summertime, bright summertime colorway, in my opinion. So, and I knit them short, so they'll be great for summer. Uh, but yes, I did officially finish those. All the ends are woven in. No more. All I have to do is sew it up. No, no, no. It's sewed up. <laughs> and then the baby blanket I was working on, I did finish. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I just couldn't put it down, you guys. I really couldn't. So I just knit, 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 knit. Uh, I do need to weave in the ends and I do need to block it. So it's finished with a lowercase f. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I knit this out of also Lion Brand yarn. Uh, the Cupcake brand, which is the same style so cupcake, right? And they uh, wrap it up so it does this, you know, you see the colors. Okay, so that's how this skein was. All right, so this colorway is called Forest Path and it's mostly blues and greens. So I started on the outside of the ball with this blue color and then it goes into this like teal and then it, it there's a stripe here that excuse me i don't know if you can really see it in this lighting but there is a stripe here where it looks like the teal and this bright green overlap which is kind of yeah you can see it there so then it goes into this um like a spring green and then like a seafoam green and then another stripe where it looks like they overlapped these two colors to get like a transition and so this is like a <sighs> lavender it looks like like a lavender color to me and then this uh another bright green also looks like they overlapped the colors right there uh, okay, so if this is like spring green, then this is like, I don't know, 
shamrock. <laughs> and then and then there was this tiny bit of blue in the middle of the ball, which does match the, does it match? Yeah, it matches the starting blue color. But yeah, I was kind of like, oh, dang it. I just wanted to end on green and not look like, I didn't want it to look like I ran out of yarn and so I just picked up a random blue color from my stash. See, if it would just ended green, it would look more complete, but whatever. I just wanted to use up as much of the yarn as possible, so. Yep, there it is. It's finished. Um, so I did knit it so it was pretty wide. Um, so I think when I block it, I will try to stretch it this way uh, so I can get more... Technically, the way it was knit, so I can get more length on it, which would pro probably, based on based on the layout, instead of this being the width, it'll probably be this will be the width, right? Okay. Anyway, you guys get it. So the pattern, I should say, is uh, Chevron Baby Blanket by Espastrico. And I found it free on Ravelry. I did increase, um, I did add more stitches. Uh, I wasn't happy with the original width when I cast on. Now I'm thinking I kind of added too many <laughs> stitches. I probably should have done something in between, but oh well, I'm not going to rip it out. It will be fine. Uh, but yeah, so this will find a home with um, either someone who is uh, expecting a young one that I know um, or I will donate it to charity. Um, one of those two things. And I don't know anyone who's pregnant, so it'll probably go to Project Linus. Okay. And that's it for like finished things um i do have i guess i should say that's it for knitting i have some spinning i want to talk about uh and one of those things is the um the skeins of yarn from my color study so i mentioned uh two out of the three skeins on the previous episode and so both of those skeins I have already knit up an object. The third skein I found, <laughs> I found the third skein and I was starting a hat with this and I was like, I don't really want a hat because part of the reason is I don't know that I would use this full skein for a hat. And it really just, I want a project that uses the whole skein. I want to see how the whole, you know, this version of spinning the colors, how it all plays together. So, so I ripped it out and I think what I'm going to do instead is a scarf. So one of the skeins I knit a shawl, the other one a cowl. And so this one I'm thinking a scarf. So then they're all... Um, like neck accessories and different versions of neck accessories as well as different versions of spinning the same fiber and anyway uh, yeah. So this is the skein where I spun opposites. Um, I call it my opposites attract <laughs> But I was I the intention was uh, spin one half of the color wheel with one ply the other half on the other ply and then ply them so that the opposite colors across the wheel match up. Um, I do see blue with orange. I do see red with green. Uh, but I also see red with teal. Um, I also see blue with yellow. Um, so it's not like it was perfect. <laughs> uh, but again, that's why I want to knit a project where you know it showcases the whole yarn in one project and a scarf is just a big rectangle of really any dimensions so i can knit this whole skein into that so that's what i'm going to do 
And so I found it, so that can go on the needles. Yep, that'll be really cool. Uh, yeah, so there's, this uh, was once a spinning project, is now about to become a knitting project. So transition piece, there we go. Uh, but of course, after finishing my color study um, and feeling the high of finishing a project and being really mot motivated to start another one, I did start prepping um, some new fibers. So, uh, you know, I went through this Coopworth spin. Uh, this is Shetland. And so what I did is I have so much more Shetland. <laughs> so um, I did wash um, uh, more of my Shetland fiber. And so here's a little bit that fell out of one of the bags as we were moving and I just tucked it in this basket. But yeah, you can see maybe some of the crimp that's in there. Anyway, uh, yeah, so I was combing this. This is all uh, combed with my uh, homemade combs that my husband made for me. So it's, it's combed and then I roll them up into these little nests and then I, sp I spin from here. Uh, but yeah, I have a lot of this. Oh, there's my um, college ID. I found it. <laughs> not going to show it to you, but <laughs> just found it. Uh, good. Uh, usually I clip that on my shirt when I go to work. Uh, but because of the pandemic, I haven't been going to campus. Um, and it just went somewhere in the move. So I'm glad I found it. When the day comes when I have to go back to campus, uh, I will be wearing it again. Especially with masks, because I imagine we'll still be wearing masks. Uh, it'll be nice to have ID. Um, anyway, so, <laughs> so uh, I did prep a bunch of this uh, while we were house hunting, actually. And I did start spinning, so I do have one skein already spun up, and of course, more on the spinning wheel. So this time I decided to just spin, wow, I'm getting fibers all over. Um, I decided to spin just the natural, the natural color. Um, for this, I did the dyeing myself. I wanted to play with color, especially after spinning this gray thing. Um, and now I'm going back to the natural, so it's just the really nice natural white color. And I think I did a better job of getting fingering weight. Oh my goodness. So I do want to knit a sweater out of this. Um, I would like it, not a cardigan, I'd like a, a pullover sweater. And I'm thinking something with um, a lace pattern to it. And it'll look, I think it'll look really nice with a white yarn. Just to really showcase that, so. Uh, I still need to weigh this and uh, calculate the yardage so I can put a tag on here. But this was spun up right around the time we found this house, actually, um, which was early September. So, uh, and then I just, you know, I washed it and hung it up to dry, and then that's as far as I got. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so I do have a skein here spun up. Uh, again, this is Shetland wool, part of some uh, Shetland that I purchased from uh, a local person in Tacoma. Uh, just drove to his house and picked it up. Paid $20 for two garbage bags full of wool. Uh, <laughs> looked really dirty and I was like, I don't know what I'm getting myself into but I want to try this and look at how gorgeous this is. So $20 well spent. Thank you, sir. Um, yeah. 
So I do have spinning. Um, I do have fiber on the wheel, yarn on the wheel. What's the right one to say? I have yarn on the needles. So do I have fiber on the wheel? Or that's just not even a thing. That's probably not even a thing. All right then. <laughs> what do you say when you're like working on a spinning project? What phrase do you use? Because I'm just, I don't know, I'm drawing blank. Okay. Oh, so that's that. Um, does that wrap it up for crafty stuff? I think it does. So thank you for joining me this week uh, in the D-Hard house. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram. My personal account is uh, Read Knit Run. You can follow the podcast at D-Hard House. Uh, you can find me on Ravelry as a Liddy Knits too. And you've probably already found my YouTube channel, uh, the D Heart House podcast on YouTube. Uh, yeah, that's all I have for you this week. I'm really excited about trying out my loom. So I'm going to have to check my timer and see if the glue has had enough time to dry. <laughs> and so I'm sure there will be updates about that in the near future, as well as a video series on my experience weaving for the first time. I love trying new stuff. It's exciting. Uh, if there are any crafts that you're trying for the first time during this pandemic, I would love to hear what they are. Uh, it would also help give me ideas of what to try next because there are so many things out there to do and I love hearing what you guys are up to. So let me know in the comments below what you have been trying during this pandemic, even if it's not an entirely new craft if it's just something new in a craft that you already enjoy. So I hope to hear from you and until next time, I hope you do enjoy your craft, whatever it may be. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you next time. Bye.